Welcome to a definition of the risk-free asset for investment modeling by Factorpad. I'm Paul and here's how we'll do it. First, we'll start with a definition. Next, we'll visualize the risk-free asset. And last, we'll demonstrate the concept in Excel. First off, I pulled this definition from our lighthearted glossary that's packed with videos, quizzes, and even a funny use it in a sentence section. So here goes. The risk-free asset is an investment with a guaranteed rate of return, meaning principal does not decline in value, and therefore it has no volatility. An example is a treasury bill. The addition of the risk-free asset to modern portfolio theory brought on capital market theory because it offered investors a choice between the risk-free asset and the market portfolio of risky assets. This is an important concept, so let's get that visual. We're sitting in Excel, and this is a snippet from our boot camp course. And there we cover all the curves, lines, and dots shown here in one 40-minute video. But because most people can't sit still that long, we break it out into 11 separate 4- to 5-minute videos, just like this one. I'll provide a link to the boot camp video number 22 at the end if you'd like to get the whole story. Okay, let's focus on the risk-free asset, also known as the risk-free rate, which is part of capital market theory developed in the 1960s. And first of all, we have a chart with expected return on the, X, the y-axis and expected risk on the x-axis. Here we are using the expected time frame, which uses historical data as input, and then you run a regression to calculate what is baked into market expectations. And this is the expected time frame. Setting expectations like this is the focus of the boot camp. Okay, now the risk-free asset marked RF1 or RF2 here is a positive figure on the return or y-axis and zero on the risk or x-axis. The curves and dots on the right represent advancements in modern portfolio theory for risky assets meaning positive risk, and we cover those topics elsewhere. But the point of the risk-free asset is that it sits over here and any investor can choose to invest exclusively in a risk-free asset. Of course, this is a theoretical concept and for academic theories to work, scholars must include a list of assumptions, meaning holding other variables constant. And here is a list of MPT assumptions to review later. Let's now demonstrate this by talking about two points. First, at RF2, an investor invests 100% in treasury bills. The second point is here at M2, which represents 100% invested in the market portfolio, which in theory is a diversified basket of all risky assets globally. As mentioned, the risk-free asset advanced portfolio theory because it demonstrated how investors could choose between or allocate to these two assets exclusively. Think about it this way. The investor seeking a higher rate of return must take risk and move up this line called the capital market line by adding risky assets. At the midpoint, the investor might have 50% in T-bills and 50% in the market portfolio. This concept introduced the terms asset allocation, which you've likely heard before, and the less popular term, the separation property. As you can tell, there's a lot to portfolio theory, and to learn more, I suggest diving right into the boot camp for a classroom approach. There you basically recreate all of this in videos that range from 15 to 40 minutes, including a short lecture with guests, and we have a little fun with it too. It's on YouTube now with no sign up. Just navigate to the playlist or from the extraordinarily useful factorpad.com. Oh, and here's the link to video 22 I mentioned earlier, and click here to be alerted about new videos. Okay, thanks for your time today. I hope you had fun learning about the risk free asset.